Hi, this is Rob for Shape Your Future Online. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about fear of failure. So fear of failure is probably the most common limiting belief that we all have. Uh, just a quick note to say, I, I think that really fear of failure is quite a broad statement and usually underlining this is uh, some more specific limiting beliefs such as, you know, things like the, the, the fear of judgment of others and fear of uh, losing money and things like that. So there are more specific limiting beliefs that we do need to address underneath this blanket of fear of failure, but it's a good place to start. And we will get into more specific uh, limiting beliefs, as I've just said, over the course of this video series. So the first thing to ask, I'm gonna mention five points here. The first thing to ask is, what does fear of failure actually mean to you? Yeah, what does failure mean to you? And is there a possibility that we can, that we can reframe that? I mean, is failure to you the fact that, you know, you're, you're gonna be judged by other people because you're not gonna be able to achieve what you've said you're setting out to achieve? Is failure for you not doing something in a specified amount of time? Is failure for you losing money or not making as much money as, as you wanted to make? Well, what if, if failure was, uh, was something that we actually have to go through? What if failure is normal? What if failure isn't doom and gloom and, uh, and the end of everything? Because what often we think as failure has been something finite, that's it, it's finished, we give up. But actually, if we reframe and think of failure as, a, as an opportunity to learn, for instance, how does that suit you? Isn't it true that we, that we failed many times at things in the past? So riding a bike, for instance, something as simple as riding a bike, how many times did you fall off that bike before you actually finally learned how to gain that balance and then that stayed with you for the rest of your life? You know, how many cut knees and bruises did you get before you got back on the bike? We did that, right? Most of us can ride a bike now, whereas we couldn't when we were three, four, five years old. So, you know, looking at failure as, as an opportunity to learn, a feedback loop, if you like. You know, we, we, we only learn from our mistakes, right? And if you look at all successful people, they will tell you that all they've done is fail upon fail upon fail upon fail until they've reached the goal that they set for themselves. It was all a learning process. Look at Thomas Edison, for instance. It was something like a thousand filaments that he developed before he actually got the one that worked to create what we now call the light bulb. And those 999 before you know, he didn't see those as failures. They didn't matter anymore. They were just part of a learning process to get him to the point where he needed to be, which was to create a magical object. So the second point that I wanted to make was, you know, let's actually look at fear of failure. And is that a real or is it a, an imagined or perceived threat? So I'll put it to you that you know, fear of failure is, it's an imagined threat, right? And what is a threat really? It's, it's just a prediction of something in the future. It's not set in stone. And actually, you know, if we, if we focus on our fear, our prediction, then that can actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. An example I could give you was, was from me, uh, last year I actually ran out of money within my business and had to go and borrow some. The reason being that about three months before I lost this money, I, all I was focusing on was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of money in three months, I'm gonna run out of money, I'm gonna run out of money, I'm gonna run out of, run out of money. And then what happened? I ran out of money and then I had to go and borrow some. Now, if I hadn't have been worried so much and focused, on losing that money and be more focused on setting small goals uh, to actually achieve the results so that I didn't end up losing the money and running out of the money, then that would have been better, right? 
But by focusing on running out of money, that's exactly what happened. Which leads me on to my third point, which is all around goal setting. And whether those goal settings are a, a growth or a promotion mindset, or whether they are an avoidance mindset, so what do I mean by that? Well, avoidance goals usually lead to more inaction, which is what happened to me in that previous example that I gave you. So, you know, with um, avoidance goals, we're, we're trying to avoid a negative outcome. So, you know, that could be, well, you know, I don't want to have uh, nothing for my efforts. So for instance, it could be a marketing campaign that we're running. It's not running particularly well. Maybe we're running out of money. We don't want to have nothing for our effort. So we might actually um, spend less money. That might be one of our tactics. Well, we're not actually dealing with the problem there, are we? At the end of the day, we are going to fail. And so we're starting to avoid. We're starting to go into a position of safety, which is usually inertia. It's, it, it's inaction. If we look at the other side of things, uh, the thing that I should have done before I ran out of the money last year um, is to, you know, to do what I would say promotion type of goals. So be in a growth mindset. So this is where we're trying to um, we're trying to achieve positive outcomes rather than avoid negative ones. So you know, uh, for instance, here we could uh, think about reverse engineering a goal. So if we're trying to achieve a positive outcome, we think about what we're trying to achieve, we reverse uh, engineer that to all of the steps that we need to do, and then we can set ourselves small, smart objective goals and take massive imperfect action to enable us to slowly achieve that goal. Which would then leave me on to uh, my uh, Third, no, sorry, fourth point, uh, which is all about not being attached to a particular result, especially within a certain time frame. So if you think about us, you know, going into this growth mindset and, uh, you know, trying to reverse engineer and, uh, you know, make small increments of process, uh, of progress, should I say, if we're if we're attached to getting a result within a certain time frame and we can see that that's not happening, that could lead us to start going towards a sort of a negative tactics again. So what we need to do is we need to um, we need to reappraise and reassess the situation, maybe change things around a little before we move on to the next step. And in doing so, we'll keep ourselves in that growth mindset. You know, as long as we're not attached to a certain result within within a certain time frame, we will get to our goal eventually. It might take us a little bit more time. It may mean that we have to change tack slightly, but we'll always be within that, uh, that growth mindset and doing those promotion type, uh, small, smart objective goals. And then my fifth and final point is that fear of failure is actually very real. But as I said at the beginning, you know, surveys show that things like um, fear of embarrassment, fear of uh, judgment, letting people down, losing face, are all more um, important to people and are, are more uh, an apparent fear than the fear of losing money, for instance, especially when we're, when we're working uh, in an online business setting. And fear of failure, it's, you know, it's not about doing the work. It's not about the fear of doing the hard work. It's about facing the consequences that we may suffer, right? We have to, we actually have to say, well, do you know what? What is the worst case scenario if this doesn't work out for me? You know, am I going to lose money? Or more importantly for most people, you know, Am I going to have to go to someone and say, well, I haven't achieved this. I said I was going to do it and I'm going to lose face. I'm going to be embarrassed, you know, and actually, how would you deal with that situation? Picture that in your mind. I mean, are you actually going to die? Is it actually going to be that bad? So if you can picture that worst case scenario and just accept it and then just let it go, we can then start to focus on the best case scenario, which is your true goal. We can get back into that growth mindset, make our promotion type goals, and then uh, just, just head on to victory. 
And it doesn't matter how long that takes, as long as we stick to that plan. Fear of failure is not going to go away. We can't, we can't avoid it. We can't eliminate it. It will be there. But by using these tools that I've just spoke about, we can step into that fear, get into a growth mindset and make massive imperfect action to make sure that we eventually reach our goals. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. I'll uh, see you in the next videos, this video series where I'm going to talk about even more specific limiting beliefs that we have. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.